All right, so you ready? This is what I'm going to do. Is that? I feel like it looks like you're just turning a flashlight on under the table. That's what I'm doing. Does that not look good? This is where you add like the angel music in, right? Like, oh. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I'm going to be talking about some things that I brought back from SHOT Show this year as well as a little information on what we did at SHOT Show. So typically we go out there to cover SHOT Show and this year was a little different. We were offered some booth space by one of our manufacturers, Rain. Uh, they are out of Indiana. So we were able to kind of tie in with them. We had our own little display set up to show uh, some products that we manufacture. So we released a new e, e kit there at the show and also kind of gave a little bit of an exclusive to some media outlets, uh, Soldier Systems, AllOutdoor.com, as well as Firearm Blog on a brand new tourniquet pouch we're working on. So we're calling it the Tourniquick and I will do a video in the future showing those new products. I didn't really want to tie up this week's gear tasting, uh, but we will put some links below so you can check out the Tourniquick product um, from Soldier Systems and those other news outlets, so we'll put the links below in the description. So first off, on range day, uh, one of our guys was out there. I was setting up the booth, so I wasn't able to attend range day this year. I'm kind of bummed about that. I really look forward to that each year. Uh, but Gators Eyewear was out there. I'm a huge fan of Gators. I've been wearing Gators sunglasses for... Uh, since 2004, whatever that math adds up to. So um, I've been wearing them for a very long time. I've probably been through three pairs of them uh, through no fault of gaiters. They're all from me either sitting on them or stepping on them or dropping them or something like that. Uh, they are very durable sunglasses. Uh, they're all metal frames. They're aluminum frames, which I really like about gaiters. Uh, they're some of the most durable sunglasses I've ever had, but I'm pretty tough on my eyewear, so I've even managed to mess those up. Uh, the last pair that I ruined was at, at Muster this year. Uh, I think that was from sitting, that was the sitting on part. But I sent them back into Gators, and uh, even though I told them the truth and said, hey, one of the hinges fell off because I sat on them, they sent me a brand new pair of glasses. So I really love their customer service and always have. Uh, they've always been phenomenal eyewear. So I was really excited when they released the Magnum Z this year. So now they come in these fancy cases. I've never seen this case before. But the Magnum Z is a non-polarized, range-safe version of their sunglasses. So these are the Magnums. That's the style that I really like a lot. They are calling these the Z87 Plus Magnum, so it's got an ANSI certification on it. And there's a pretty cool testing procedure that goes through, uh, that happens with the ANSI procedure. So the Z87 Plus is a very specific rating and it's a very specific testing protocol and I was able to find the testing data from that. I couldn't find what the just regular Z87 was versus the Plus, but the Plus is what I did find. So from, at 102 miles per hour, a quarter inch steel ball is shot at the lens from 150 feet. And Gators has some pretty cool video um, on YouTube of the steel ball actually hitting this and you watch the vibration of the glasses. It's kind of neat. And then the second criteria is a five inch drop of a 500 gram pointed weight onto the lens and it's called the high mass test. So they drop that directly on the lens and what I assume is a pointed weight is something that really does come to a point to see if it breaks the glass or the lens per se, not made of glass. And I'm excited about this because I've always secretly worn gators to the range without them being ANSI certified. So now I have some glasses that, you know, can follow rule number one, always look cool on the range. So I'm excited about those. And those are new this year. They just came out at SHOT Show. Um, if you're wondering, this is the only pair that they've made so far, meaning the only style they have in the, the Z um, ANSI certification is the Magnum. Um, this is some other details on them. They're calling them impact resistant polycarbonate technology and 100% UV protection, anti-scratch coating. And they do have selected polarized so styles on here, so it's possible that they might come in polarized. I've been trying to get out of the polarized glasses thing. They, I've, I've kind of noticed that they've done more harm than good, and not really harm, but I've just not liked what I've seen through them. Um, I really don't see the benefit, and typically they're more expensive than other glasses. So 
Anyhow, that's the gaiters I wear. Um, another thing that I came across, and actually I met with this guy at our booth, which is kind of neat being in a booth and having a central point of contact for people to come by and talk to me and stuff like that, as well as being able to interact with people like you guys out there that stopped by the booth. It was awesome getting to meet everybody. Um, this is a, a barrel, and it comes from Dynamic Defense Development. This is a new company I hadn't heard about, and I talked to Tom, their CEO. He stopped by. So this is a barrel to reduce gas blowback into the upper receiver of an AR. So if you have ever shot, and I should say the caveat, for suppressed rifles, um, if you've ever shot a suppressed rifle, you know the gas blowback into the upper receiver is astronomically more than without a suppressor. So this barrel is designed to reduce that through the use of the way the gas port's drilled, I assume, and some other details. Um, he didn't really talk much about the actual tech to me as to what it's doing. Um, only that it will reduce it. So I'm looking forward to trying it out. This is about a 12 and a half inch barrel. We detected by the measuring from the, uh, the barrel extension here to the, uh, to the tip here. So and this is a 223 wild chamber. It's a 1 8 twist um, CMV, I think is chrome moly vandium, vandium, something like that. So this is a barrel I'm looking forward to checking out. Um, their website, if you would like to check them out, is dynamicdefensedevelopment.com. So looking forward to that. And then old Mill Spec Monkey stopped by the booth and he uh, handed me a few patches as he always does. And these really caught my eye. These are pretty neat. So these are a combo Solus flag slash IR flag. So the material that's used in here is not only a Solus, which stands for safety of life at sea, uh, but it's also an IR reflective material. So if you hold up a flashlight to this, hopefully you guys can see the reflective nature of the patch, but it also reflects under IR light too. So I'm interested in those. I like the size of them too. It's a pretty, uh, pretty good sized IR or flag patch. I was going to pull something out, but anyway, that's a good size. Um, he's got the forward and the reverse flags, and it's kind of a neat way that he did this. So he's got a clear PVC overlaid on the actual IR flag. So he was telling me he created these because IR flags fall apart all the time. And I have witnessed that. So when you're wearing IR flags, they kind of peel up from the edges and things like that. So this is an attempt to fix that problem by overlaying it in a clear PVC, and then it's still stitched around the sides to hold the hook Velcro on the back, but um, I really do like these. I think it's a neat idea, and he's found a way to kind of stabilize the inherent nature of IR patches falling apart. So those come from Millspec Monkey. And that's kind of a, a rough idea of some things that are brought back from SHOT. Um, I've also came back with a whole shitload of patches, obviously. Um, challenge coins always do some kind of swap with people there too. Um, and I finally gave out all my challenge coins. So I'm all out of those. We'll have to make some new ones. Anyway, that is SHOT Show. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. First question today comes from Jason Y over email. What size shock cord did you put on the handles of your mini bolt cutters? I assume you're talking about this pair that I shared the info on the shock cord with. And these are collapsible bolt cutters for anybody that is questioning which ones these are out there. They're made by a company called Tough Built. We'll throw the link up in the description. But this is 1 8 inch shock cord. Um, just some stuff that I had laying around here and just tied a couple of overhand knots, uh, doubled over, and then this makes a nice retaining loop because without this, they kind of flop around. So kind of a nice addition to this. Maybe something they could have put on there to begin with. Anyway, next question comes from Rick on Twitter. What are your thoughts on Ranger panties or silkies? Any alternatives? Yeah, actual shorts. Um, I don't really like running around in those. I've never really cared for them. There's a reason I don't wear UDT shorts anymore. Uh, don't like my bubble gum hanging out. So anyway, next question. Dave K from Twitter. 
I'm taking a rifle on a float trip and I'm looking for a good dry bag to keep the rifle safe and dry. Thoughts? So without knowing kind of the details of how you're handling that float trip, whether you're on an inner tube, whether you're on a boat, um, whether you're literally swimming with dragging a float bag behind you, I'm not really sure what your criteria is for that. So I'll just go and kind of go over some different options. Um, so for kind of the more, I don't know, large scale option, um, there's always the old Pelican case. These are, you know, these are waterproof because they're sealed and you wouldn't have an issue really with those um, if you had the ability to store that in the space that you need for it. Um, however, if you have the ability to break the rifle apart, if there's an upper and lower kind of configuration, if that's the kind of rifle you're talking about, um, you could even just put some padding in a normal old uh, roll top dry bag and probably be okay with that too. Um, then another option is that Locksack makes some really big uh, dry bags like this and these are just kind of the zip top style bags but it's enough to at least keep kind of the water off of it if you're in that kind of environment. I, I don't necessarily think it would be good to float this bag per se. Um, this probably you might be able to get away with floating it um, but I don't know. It's still nylon so eventually it could leak if it's fully submerged. Not quite sure about that, but I would venture to guess that's probably accurate. And then there's always kind of the old standby watershed bag too. So if you're literally floating the rifle down the river behind you and dragging it, um, you would want something with an oral inflation tube like this that you can actually inflate the bag with. So with these, you seal them up, you know, the seal is what actually seals it. So you don't have to roll it up. It's just a, a method to secure it. And obviously this one's too small to store a rifle. I'm just using this as an example. I've got multiple sizes up there, but rather than try to talk through a huge bag, I'll just show this. Uh, but these are fully submergible um, and you know, you can actually let the air out if you're diving with them too. So as they, as you dive and they, they basically gain air because of what's that Boyle's law, something. One of the dive laws is what causes things to expand underwater. You can actually release the air um, through the oral inflation tube too, as well as inflating it when you're on the surface to float it behind you. So those are some options for bags. Um, real quick, back to the uh, Ranger Panties question, since you said alternatives and I've been thinking of alternatives in my mind since I didn't really feel that part of it, um, I would say just get some good, you don't really say what you're using these for, but I would say just get some good running shorts if you're running, uh, maybe a swimsuit if you're swimming, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's just, let's just breeze past that. Hey guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember as always, send your questions via the pound tag Gear Tasting to any social media network. We will find them and answer them here on the show. And if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I would urge you to do that. It will allow us to not only grow our channel, which is obviously great, um, but at the end result, it's to sh get our videos into more hands. So YouTube displays those to new audience uh, suggestions based on our subscriber base. So it does really help, as well as turning on that little bell that will send you notifications when we post a new video, which on Gear Tasting is every Thursday. We also record Gear Tasting Radio in a video format that's released every Tuesday. So those are our videos that are pushed up to YouTube every week, along with some extras and if we do film them during the week. Um, also, I would urge you to check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash ITS Tactical. Um, in reward for your patronage or signing up over there on Patreon, we've got some cool benefits to give you as well. Thanks for watching.